Hi, welcome back to the Celti Splice tutorial. In the previous video, we have seen the CS amplifier with the resistive load, and the gain of the amplifier was this minus GM times the RD parallel RO. But we tried to increase the gain by increasing GM or RD, but it wasn't possible to after some level because RD and GM has their own trade-off, right? So if we try to increase RD, what happened was the voltage swing at the output decreased but we have to remember that we have made an assumption that ro is a very large value and we have reduced this uh, entire equation into gm times rd but what if we can have the gain which is completely independent of rd what if we can have the gain only with gm times ro is it possible yes it is possible if it is possible when we can replace this rd by an infinite resistance but what is what gives an infinite resistance it's the current source so we need to replace this rd by a current source so that we can have minus gm times ro where ro is a very high resistance and this high resistance is not going to affect anything it's not going to affect my output voltage swing so it's going to have a lot of gain this is the idea behind the common source amplifier with the current source load but we can't have an ideal current source in the true scenario so we can have a mosfet a mosfet in saturation region acts as a current source so we can have the load which is rd as a mosfet a pmos kept in saturation region so let's discuss the design of common source amplifier with the with the active load or current source load we know that pmos in saturation region or nmos in saturation region is not an ideal current source so the resistance across pmos is nothing but the channel resistance so we have introduced a parameter called ro2 so the gain of common source amplifier with the active current source load is nothing but minus gmn I have I have named it as GMN because we are using PMOS and GMP. The GM of the P doesn't come into picture. So GMN, as we have done it before, mu and C ox W by L, VGS minus VTH. We are going to fix VGS. We are going to fix VTH by using the level one model of transistor of the NMOS. So we are we are going to fix this mu and C ox. Uh, to 200 micro ampere per volt square by um, using the transconductance parameter kp and we are going to fix w and l also and we have the equations for ro1 and ro2 1 by lambda n times id 1 by lambda p times id we have to fix this lambda n and lambda p and there's a parameter called as lambda in uh, level one parameters of mosfet model uh, we are going to use that parameter and set it to 0.1 and 0 0.05 in LD spice. And finally, what we need to do is uh, we need to calculate RO1 and RO2. For that, we need this current ID. And this ID has to be same throughout the circuit. To do so, I have to first calculate the IDN, the current through the NMOS. To do that, I have to uh, use this i know mu and c ox i know w by l of n i know vgsn minus vdh and whole square i can calculate idn and later what i supposed to do is once i have all these values i substitute all these values and i calculate idn as 20 micro amperes okay and i have to take this 20 micro amperes see this sentence the bias voltage of the current source must be chosen so that these currents are equal the idp and idn should be equal to id it should be a single current in the entire circuit so what i need to do is once i calculate idn i have to put this idn in this idp place and i have to calculate what is v bias well calculating v bias please make sure that you have to take the root right when we have a square here we have to take a root so it gives a plus or minus but uh, in this case it gives a plus or minus 0 0.014 but the minus doesn't work only the plus works so v bias becomes 0 0.014 this is how we calculate um, 
and finally we have ro1 and ro2 we have to calculate uh, we have that equation 1 by lambda times you can see this 1 by lambda n times id on lambda p times id we know lambda n and lambda p we calculated id and if you do that you will get 500 kilo ohms and ro2 as 1 mega ohm with these values i'll get av as around 133 approximately it may vary a little bit we have to simulate this in lt spice and uh, see how it works so now we are in lt spice i'll keep this file the schematic file in the description you can download the file and use it let's check the values which i have given uh, here the l and w are 0.18 and 3.6 which makes it w by l20 and p mos has length 10 micro and width 1 micro which makes it uh, 0.1 w by l and i specified the process parameters used using these spice directives you can also do that by using this dot operator and typing dot model or something like that uh, remember that these are not uh, case sensitive let's run this and see the output I'm going to click on V out and I'm also going to click on V in. So I'll add another plot plane because the input is very small and I'm going to move this V in and it has a DC shift. If you can see, I'm going to subtract 0 0.5 from that and it, 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 it will show me from 0 to 1 mil. Okay. So input is 2 millivolt peak to peak and the output let's see what's the peak to peak value of the output using the cursors two cursors okay i'm gonna keep it here and i'm gonna keep this down so the output peak to peak is around 272 uh, which becomes uh, 136 gain i believe uh, has around 133 gain which was almost near to what we did in calculation you can also run the AC analysis and see the output. So I'll comment this transient analysis first by using a semicolon and uh, uncomment this AC analysis by removing this semicolon. Uh, I'll do it again and run the simulation and click on output. I'm going to get 42.88 dB. Uh, if you do again 10 power. 42.88 divided by 20 you are going to get the same value which is nothing but around 136 or something so finally what's our conclusion the gain here is very much better than the passive resistor load so there is a huge increase in gain for which we are always greedy about but the problem here is it's very difficult to manage uh, the bias voltage which we are giving to the pmos in real circuits because if we vary the bias voltage by a little the variation in the gain is very large if you want to see that i'm going to show you again in the lt spice so i'm going to decrease this voltage to 0 0.05 it's just 0 0.05 difference if you if you carefully observe it was 0 0.014 which is 0 0.01 uh, if i decrease by a 5 millivolts 0 0.05 let's see what's going to happen to the gain of the amplifier it's it's 15 decibels which means uh, it it's five the gain of the amplifier is almost it's around five to six volts per volts so you can see that the gain of the amplifier is varying by a large amount with the smallest variation in the v bias so this is the problem with the common source amplifier with the current source load even though it gives a large gain uh, keeping this V bias is a very difficult task. So how to solve this problem with the common source amplifier with the current source load of uh, difficult to manage the bias voltage. There are other topologies uh, of amplifi amplifiers uh, which give higher gain and also uh, without this difficulty. We'll discuss them in the next video. That's it. Thank you.